Hey, family, it's Brother Marlon. Motivational Monday. I am sharing with you some of my interview with Reverend Dr. Chris Conti. He's a medical physician and he is a pastor. Pastor is a church here in Pittsburgh, PA called Emmanuel Baptist Church in Rankin. And he has an interesting perspective when it comes to uh, churches and getting back and how we should handle that. Uh, we go green this coming Friday, um, but he has some perspectives that we need to really pay attention to, some food for thought. And this next question, I asked him about youth sports, professional sports, collegiate sports, sports in general. We have some really good information in this next segment. I hope you enjoy it. I want to go back because you brought it up a couple of times and it uh, jogs some questions in my mind um, when it comes to you sports and sports just period, um, because we're wearing masks socially. Um, and I, I want to ask a question about the mask as well. But how do we uh, handle the athletes? Because there are some sports where you come in close contact with the other athletes. And there's no way to social distance. So how do we, because I know there's this push to get back our sports and people, you know, we will, we got to get back out. There's a lot of money that's been lost and right. we're going to have all sports playing at the same time for a little bit um, so that everybody can get their season in. Um, right. How do they regulate that even in locker rooms? And there are so many different, you know, things that this brings up. So how can people do this in a safe way? with with organized youth sports so in in pennsylvania they have you know coined the the, the phrase as i'm sure many other places have also organized youth sports which just means youth sports that uh, are supervised by adults so not just pick up games uh, at the park but these are the sports where you got to sign your kid up uh you know they hand out a uniform you get a coach and you know you get a halftime snack assignment and all these things. So these are organized sports, whether it be in school or outside of school. And, you know, my, the majority of my children are soccer players. Uh, that's what I did. Um, part of my uh, physician role involves uh, sports medicine uh, from the soccer standpoint. And so okay. we are, uh, we meaning organized youth soccer across the country uh, is uh, working to try to figure out a lot of these same dilemmas that these other sports are trying to figure out. Uh, within Pennsylvania, we break sports down in terms of collision sports, which are boxing, wrestling, and football, uh, contact sports, which is pretty much everything else with the exception of uh, tennis and golf. So even cheerleading is considered a contact sport. Um, because of the physical contact that you come into with either a teammate or an opponent. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, so unless you're having a fist fight with your, with your opponent in golf or tennis, that's why they're considered non-contact sports. Right. Um, but so the problem is with these contact and these collision sports, how do you maintain social distancing? Well, the answer is just as you said, you can't. Um, if you're going to play and not just practice, because you can you can script non-contact, non-collision practice activities, right? But right. can't do it in competition, and so you know the, no one really knows the answer to that, other than to say that you know if if you if you can limit contact off the competitive field, so maintaining social distancing when you're on the bench, making sure that all non participant athletes, so players on the bench, coaches on the bench uh, are wearing face protection, uh, keeping hand sanitizer and those things, uh, making it mandatory for every athlete to have their own hand sanitizer in their, in their bag, not sharing equipment, no longer having a water cooler. You're responsible for your water. If you don't bring it, you won't have it. Um, no snacks for these youth sports. So, you know, you know, I'm sure her family is going to breathe a sigh of relief, you know, forgetting that there's that nightmare scenario of, you know, you were assigned for the snack that day and you forget it. And now you're getting a side eye from all your friend, all your kids' friends because you forgot to bring the snack. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Hey, family. There's not going to be any snack distribution. A hey, family. It's Brother Marlin right now. Know, there probably is not going to be 
Uh, hey, family, it's Western Brother Marlon LA, right now. Time kind of for segment number four. Uh, I am sharing yeah, with you my interview with Reverend to, Dr. To Chris Conti. Um, he is a you know, physician and a pastor. Like, so his know, perspective is very interesting because he sees bus, it on both well, sides because then of the coin. Prolonging um, the indoor I asked gathering him in this segment in the locker room. Symptoms. So, you know, there are lots because of little logistical of things that we don't pay attention uh, every to. Is going to what may be going on on the inside. We pay attention to the outside. But to play God pays protocol. attention to what's going on and, more on the inside. Uh, you know, Why don't we do at that? School level, anyway, I'm check sure out my interview PIAA with Pastor Chris and, and Whippio here locally are going to have guidance. Um, but then at the school level, all right, there's that's segment to be number four. Oversight. Some food for thought. Uh, I hope so, you're learning. You know, I hope you're getting some good information. Please share it with somebody coaches, you feel managers, needs to see this. Trainers, um, it's Motivational Monday, so we're just encouraging and, you with and, great information and, and inspiration that hopefully blesses you know, your life. So for example, and I got one more segment of this interview. Please comment. Let me know what you're thinking about this. Share it with somebody that needs to hear this information. We appreciate your support. It's Motivational Monday. Have to I'll sign be back for your child bit. saying that you know I am assuming the risk. I understand that there's always going to be risk, and I understand that. The hey, family, it's Brother Barlin back once again with Motivational Monday. I am sharing with you some of my interview with this Reverend Dr. Space Chris Conti. He's and for our kids a medical play, doctor, but I understand and he that I'm is assuming a pastor, some risk. and he has um, a very and, interesting know, perspective, youth, youth and I just believe all pastors high, need to get this you know, information. Um, it's not about what city you live in. It's not what denomination you are. It's about keeping our people safe and to pay the liability insurance having a plan for the and organization. So Pastor Chris and Conti so, has know, given us some very to specific the things cost. that we need to I have in place. I know that the green light you know, is so, going on, so you but sports, make sure that you know, we are we planning the kids back to be back because one, it's in healthy. church. And two, so it's part of this last segment that I asked him, and again, um, this is not just about it church. It's about if you go to the store, uh, wherever you may go. It's about the green, masks and the protection that we use to keep ourselves safe their and to keep others safe. Starting this coming Check weekend. out this segment. And so again, just as way. with the church, uh, as a as a concerned and informed parent, all right, family. There are certain questions that's it. You need to My ask interview with Pastor Chris Conti. I hope you enjoyed it. If you just caught this segment and you missed the other four, go protocol. back and find it. There are five segments to this one, interview. I thank him so much. Next time, maybe we'll get one, his wife on because it. she's a physician maybe as well. Out, um, just some great perspectives to have. If you are Christian, then you understand. You see when you search the internet and say, "Hey, I noticed that you know this." program here in Kentucky. Has All right, family, place. Why that's don't we it. This in my place? five segment um, interview. You know, just because you may actually improve. All right, your family, that's the last segment of my interview with Reverend Dr. Chris Conti. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was blessed by it. I hope it gave you something to think about. How to keep and safe, I hope it gave you something to work on as well. Um, I know I took lots of notes as he was talking. I put some things down. Uh, in yeah. this new normal, yeah, definitely gonna, um, there's uh, going to be, be less gathering. Planning, you know, how you know how uh, it is now. Just you're sitting and watching your kids at practice that we're in. or at a game, um, and their younger siblings are running around. around. Said, things are going to balance itself out. Right. Be fine, well, but not gonna happen what do we so do you're gonna in have the meantime? To manage your child. And so that's why um, having a plan is very important. So if you just caught this segment, there are four other segments of the interview. Go back on my page and check them out. Um, Literally it's really next good, to you and I really believe it'll bless your car. life. But um, Reverend Dr. Chris you know, Conti, so, great information. Uh, Get his know, contact other, information. Areas, Got more questions uh, for him. Reach out his, to him you know, and his the, wife. One of the team more building, than happy to kind help of learning. Him. Okay, more motivational Monday sports, uh, you know, segments coming uh, your way. You know, I, I hope this is blessing you. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about motivational Monday and what we're doing and trying to accomplish here. Trying to lift up the body and give you some inspiration, some laughter. The protocols right here that I've been part of putting Maybe together the says that you know there's there's no handshakes before or after the game there's no fist bumps there's no contact to celebrate there's no um, you know there's no sharing of water bottles there's no sharing of equipment there's no um, and, and then there's no picking up or helping the coach set up or take down the practice environment that's you know it's a one touch thing the person who touched it is the one that picks it back up. And so, you know, these are all things that need to be part of the procedure. And I think the, the toughest one that's going to happen for parents is that they're going to be limited in their ability to attend and watch practice from the sideline. Um, I know in the protocol that I'm working with uh, folks with now, it limits 
Uh, it limits that number to one parent per player, maintaining social distancing while wearing a mask. And we're really encouraging, unless your child is over the under the age of 12, we're really encouraging you to just stay in the car and not be on the sideline at all. Um, and so, which is gonna be hard because there are a lot of those parents who wanna be involved and wanna know what's going on. And then there's some who are on the sideline because they're a distraction. I mean, we all know those parents um, and some of us have been those parents at times. But the point is, is that now, um, you know, if you have a young child, uh, then you may need to stay on the sideline and the coach may actually want you there to help keep your child focused on these safety issues. Um, but if you have an older child, you know, upper middle school through high school, you don't need to be on the sideline. All you're doing is exposing everybody to what you got and potentially exposing yourself to what everybody else has got. And then you bring that home. Um, it's going to change what carpools look like. You know, mm. can you carpool now? You know, are you going to put your kid in a car with a bunch of other people like we do now? And that's, I mean, that's the life's blood of a lot of youth sports is the carpool. Some kids right. are only able to participate because there's a carpool. Um, you know, but now what is that, what's that even going, you know, to look like? And then in terms of youth sports, what, what age is too young? Um, you know, you've got sports that go down as young as U5, U6. You know, is that a safe space to tell? I mean, if you talk to a teacher of a, of a preschooler, kindergartner, or first grader, they'll tell you their attention span is like 15 minutes long. Mm -hmm. And so how feasible is it to keep a child focused on your practice session for, say, an hour, but also now by yourself because you can't have parents helping anymore to try to keep kids who are six years old, five years old, focused on also, oh, no high fives, no wrestling right. on the field, right. you know, no bumping into each other. So, you know, youth sports may have a cutoff that's a bit older now until we get a better handle of COVID. So there may be a lot of five, six, seven, eight, nine year olds that won't be able to participate in organized sports because it's just not safe or feasible. So, you know, there, there are lots of things. So if you have a child who's say six and, you know, midget football's coming up and, you know, we know that's organized chaos on a good day. Mm -hmm. you know, midget football <laughs> is organized chaos on a good day. And now let's say it's not a good day. And you got 47 year olds out there with their helmets and stuff. And you trying to tell them that unless you're doing the tackling drill, y'all need to keep your hands off each other. You know, how feasible is that going to be? Right. But when, you know, 30% of your budget are those midget players under the age of eight. Now, how do you, how do you stay in business? If now you have to say, ma'am, sir, I'm sorry, we've cut our ages off now at 12. So now every kid under 12 who, you know, well, aside from dealing with all the petitions from the nine and 10 year old parents who are like, my kid can play up and play with the 12 year olds, you know, you're gonna have to deal now with the fact that 30% of your budget is gone because now you can't play sports with these younger ages because it's just not safe. Right. So, you know, that, you know, I'm, I think that we're gonna start to see more kids playing a lot of these non-contact sports. There's gonna be a lot more tennis players, you know, more Venuses and Serenas, uh -huh. more Tigers playing these non-contact sports because they're safer from, a, from, from just a public health standpoint um, but, you know, there, there are going to be some questions. I mean, I, I believe that what's driving a lot of the youth sports decision-making at the high school level, as both of us know, is going to be football. Um, not because they think football is better than everything else, but, but many athletic departments' budgets are made or lost based yes. on football. Yes. You know, Friday night game attendance, concessions and all these things, they're a huge budget item. And I'm not saying that schools are making decisions based on the budget, but at the same time, schools make decisions based on the budget. And right. so, you know, they don't want to put families and players and referees and coaches in jeopardy. But if they can safely come up with a strategy to play the Whippeal football season, they're going to play it because mm -hmm. there's, I mean, 
pretty much any other sport is driven by the revenue that comes in from football. And that means there are a lot of other sports that won't happen if football revenue grinds to zero because they can't play. So, you know, how, how that looks, I have no idea. You know, is it going to mean that no one can watch the game, uh, you know, in the stands and everybody has to watch it on television or online? You know, I, I don't know. But, um, you know, there, there are some decisions in the school sports environment that are going to need to be made. And I think they're trying to make those now. I know Whitfield and PIAA are constantly meeting to try to solve that question. How do we, how do we create a safe space and allow these kids to still compete? Um, because there are a lot of kids whose competition drives their future. You know, they're, they are going to go to college because of their ability to be a scholar athlete. And without the athlete part, it makes the scholar part much, much harder. And so, you know, and Whippeal, I, and I believe rightly so, and PIA understand that. They understand that a lot of these kids go to school because of the sport they play. And if they can't play, then their future, the trajectory of their future changes. And, and so, you know, they, everybody's got these tough, tough decisions to make. And at the end of the day, we as parents then have to make decisions. As congregants, we have to make decisions that we feel are in our best interest. And, um, you know, I would just encourage you to talk it out with somebody that you, with people that you trust. I would encourage you to kind of stay current with the information, but find that balance between staying informed and not having emotional overload. You know, like, you know, this weekend I had to turn off the TV, not because of COVID, but because of what was, what's been going on with brother Floyd. I just had to turn it off for a minute because my brain right. was just overwhelmed and overloaded. And it uh, didn't, didn't mean that I didn't care. It's just like your brain can only take so much. Yes, and sir. so you have to find that balance between staying informed about COVID and not being so, you know, mesmerized by the TV that that's all you're doing. Because, you know what, there, there's life still going on out there. And uh, at some point, there's always going to be some level of risk. You just have to try to minimize it as best you can. So, you know, remain prayerful, remain praise filled, remain informed, and keep making the best decision you can make with the information that's in front of you. And I think everyone will all be okay. This, this, the dust is going to settle. You know, the landscape's going to look a little different, uh, in some ways, a lot different in some other areas. But, but we're going to make it through, and um, we'll be able to look back on this. And, and, and say and realize that we learned a lot about ourselves, about our fellow neighbors, uh, about how strong and determined we can be, about how we can be flexible. And uh, I think things like this re remind us, uh, you know, certainly of some of the disparities out there, but it also reminds us that we're more alike than we're different. And we all have the same concerns. I can guarantee you that whether you're white, uh, black, Hispanic, uh, Asian, every one of us sits at home and prays that our children are healthy and that our loved ones who go off to work come home and don't come back infected right. and uh, our loved ones that are sick recover. So at, at a very basic level, we're, we're far more similar than we are different. And I think that that's going to be what helps us as, as a human community get through this together. So, I, like I said, I appreciate the time uh, to talk, and um, you know, I'm always available. Uh, folks can um, uh, can reach me uh, through uh, if they go to our church website, uh, they can re reach me that way. Uh, they can reach me through social media, and I can give you that information uh, as well. And you know, please feel free to uh, share that with people because I, you know, I'm, I'm here to help. I believe that's part of the ministry that I've been called. Uh, to provide for this world, to try to leave it a little better than it was when I found it. Uh, I do not pretend to be perfect, uh, and, but if I can't find, if I don't know the answer, I can try to find it out. So, so uh, I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to share. 
All right, that's Pastor Chris Conti. That's part number three of my interview. I'll come back and share four and five in just a little bit. But again, please like this. Please share it. Let somebody know because I think this is really some good information that we all need to have. Uh, whether you're going back to church, whether you're not, but you're going somewhere. You may have to go to work. You may have to go to the grocery store. There's some things that you should be aware of. And Check out all five of these segments of this interview because it's great information. But let somebody know, Reverend Dr. Chris Conti has some good information for us. We'll be back in just a few minutes. It's Motivational Monday. I'm Brother Marlon.